Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering draft video. It's Al here with you. This is how to draft MTG. First of all, I apologize for the uh, audio quality of this video. I am on the road for work, but I did want to get this out as quickly as possible. So here we go. We're talking about Shadows over Innistrad Remastered, my week two format update. We're going to talk about the Shadows of the Past editions as well as uh, sort of a uh, brief guide on how to draft the format thus far. As always, please click like, leave a comment, and hit subscribe if you like what we're doing here. It helps a huge amount. First of all, the uncommons in this set are super powerful, much more powerful than most of the commons. So these are really going to lead your draft in a lot of ways. Uh, we're talking about cards like Indulgent Aristocrat. Uh, this is a really strong pull into the Black Red Vampires archetype. Neville Gast Herald is a really strong pull into the White Blue Spirits archetype deck almost uh, it really comes to life uh, with with the Herald. You can definitely play without it, but it's a huge, huge draw to that archetype. A uh, clear shot just being a, a really, really busted removal spells and combat trick in one card. I was going to pull you into any type of green archetype. Town Gossip Monger and Lone Rider are going to pull you into the white humans-based archetypes. Uh, News Constrictor is an interesting one. This is just a really solid green uncommon that I totally missed on in my original set review, but this, this just makes you want to play Green White Humans, it works in the Red Green Werewolves archetype just as a good two drop. And of course, it's an amazing uh, Delirium enabler. So don't overlook this one. The Squatch Recruiter, just good in any green deck. Again, just provides so much value in the late game and uh, is a, a strong play on turn two as well. Faith Unbroken is one of the best removal spells in the set. Don't overlook this one either. Kind of has a lot of text and looks clunky, but it's really, really good. Uh, four mana to buff your creature and remove one of theirs is uh, super strong in a format that doesn't really have access to the typical like cheap black removal spell. Uh, a lot of the damage-based stuff can't deal with four or five toughness, and uh, the white removal spells, uh, for the most part, uh, just sort of they don't remove the creature from the battlefield. So uh, this card is is even a little bit better than it might be normally. It's very, very good. And uh, Courageous Outrider, of course, pulling you towards uh, the Humans archetype. Toppelgeist, excellent in Blue-White Spirits, of course. Uh, Near Heath Chaplain, just good anywhere. It's good in Spirits, it's good in Humans. Uh, it's good in like a white-black deck, even though that's not a super supported archetype. It's just a very powerful card. Fiery Temper, a solid removal spell, but really at its best in uh, Black Red uh, Madness, of course, but also the Blue Red decks can play this if you got some Madness outlets as well. And Howl Pack Resurgence is, a, is the real pull into the Red Green Werewolves archetype. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the premium removal of the set at Common. Uh, these are just going to fit into literally any deck and uh, should be taken fairly highly. Galvanic Bombardment and Incendiary Flow, for sure, are two of the top cons in the set, so take them highly, play Red. Uh, red's probably the best color, so these are a great place to start your draft. Uh, Angelic Purge is a bit of a surprise to me, but I know some people have been on this from the beginning. Uh, just a, a solid removal in white. Exile is really important, and sacrificing stuff can often be good for you if you're trying to enable Delirium, which white is sometimes interested in doing. Uh, Bound by Mood Silver, just a premium white removal spell, deals with pretty much anything. And uh, the sacrifice text does matter sometimes if you're trying to uh, enable delirium or if they play something bigger and you want to move it around. That's really good too. And then, uh, of course, Rabbit Bite in green. I didn't talk too much about this one in my initial video, but uh, it's proved to be very good. Uh, being a sorcery is actually quite nice too for delirium purposes. It uh, kills most of the things you want to kill. So take these cards highly, with the exception of Purge. I wouldn't take it super highly, but you, I guess you could. Uh, and uh, build your decks accordingly. All right, and then uh, we'll talk about the uh, four sort of main archetypes that are doing well. So if you're just sort of jumping into the format and you want to see sort of what's working and where you should start, uh, this is what I would recommend. Green White Humans has been doing quite well. Um, we've got uh, we've got Thraben Inspector is just one of the top commons in the set, and you'll see uh, that it fits into a few different decks. And then of course we've got uh, Strength of Arms. It's a really important piece to this deck. If you don't have combat tricks, you will run into situations where your opponent just has like a bunch of two threes and two fours and, and bigger things you just can't get through because your creatures don't have flying. Um, so Strength of Arms is a big way to just sort of continue to push damage uh, as the game goes on. Intrepid Provisioner, a bit of a surprise here as well, uh, but uh, it does do some serious work and plus two plus two is no joke, especially in an aggressive deck. So look out for it. Byway Courier, solid body, add some value, and Obsessive Scanner, same deal. So Humans is pretty straightforward, but uh, I really do want to stress how important playing uh, a lot of Thraven Inspectors and Strength of Arms is to the deck. And of course, if you can get 
some of those good uncommons in pre-member removal that we talked about at the start of the video, then you're in really good shape to draft it. Uh, in terms of what it's getting this week from the Shadows of the Past, you get Lingering Souls, which is one of the most busted uncommons in limited history. Uh, even if you can't flash it back, it's still quite good. Like two one one flyers for three mana is just really good, but uh, it shouldn't be too, too hard to maybe find a black source or two. And even if you just have one tap land that produces black, like maybe sometimes you flash it back, sometimes you don't. Uh, it's really powerful and fits well here. Uh, travel preparations, this is the big one for this deck. Um, yeah, two mana to put two one one counters, it's really good. And then of course you're flashing it back and uh, it just gets really out of hand really quickly. Back in original Innistrad, there were decks that, you know, this was a common, so you'd have decks with like three or four of these, and it was just really, really difficult to uh, to beat. Uh, it's almost like an anthem for your team uh, in a lot of ways uh, at common, so uh, really, really good. And then uh, Rally the Peasants is um, a good sort of overrun of style effect. I'm not sure how much this deck wants it, but if you can flash it back, it's pretty tough to deal with for your opponents. So I would look out for this one. It's less of a priority than the other two, but I think it could find a home here. Uh, the next archetype is Black Red Vampires and Madness. Um, so we're just trying to sort of play a bunch of excellent Madness cards. Uh, the two best ones are Geese's Bidding and Alchemist Greeting, and we're trying to discard them to our Madness enablers, such as uh, Olivia's Dragoon, which is far and away the best one, Ravenous Bloodseeker, which is a solid one, and Insolent Neon Neonate, which is a nice uh, turn one play and it can enable some stuff later. So. Um, this deck is can be a little bit tricky to play uh, and build. Just make sure that when you're you're building it, uh, I would recommend sorting your cards in in two piles, being one pile being uh, the madness cards and the other pile being the madness enablers uh, as you're drafting, and just sort of make sure you've got an even number of both, uh, and that's where the deck will sort of perform the best. In terms of what it's getting this week, not a whole lot, but faithless looting is a pretty cool one. Um, single mana draw two, discard two, so you'll probably get to madness at least one thing off of this, which kind of makes it like a draw three, discard one, uh, and it can flash back later in the game. So uh, quite powerful and, and certainly worth looking out for. The uh, looting will also fit into like a blue-red spells deck as well. Um, and then I've included Bump in the Night here, not because I think it's good, but because I think uh, a lot of people are going to include this, and I think you should not. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess we'll see how the format bears out, but I, I think this card is typically not worth it. Uh, flashing it back for six is, is quite a bit, um, and it just doesn't do anything early in the game. Uh, in terms of getting you on board and and uh, and defending against what your opponent's doing, uh, so I, I would just I would recommend not playing bump in the night. All right, uh, spirits is next. Blue white spirits, Draven Inspector again. Just not even a spirit, but it's still the best card in this deck. So take these highly and play them. Uh, Apothecary Geist is sort of the main common payoff for spirits, as we talked about in the previous video, and it has proven to be pretty good. So uh, hopefully, if you're in this archetype, you're you're getting these. Uh, later in packs as other people can't play them and, and you get to play like three or four of these. They're pretty sweet. Uh, Tattered Haunter, solid two drop. Essence Flux has been pretty impressive, uh, certainly better than it looks. Uh, saves one of your spirits for removal or re-triggers your Nebelgast. Uh, your, I can't remember the name of the card. The card that ta taps things. Uh, Nebelgast Herald, that's it. Um, and uh, yeah, this card has been pretty impressive. And then Guardian of the Pilgrims, just another solid two drop. So sort of plays exactly like you think, just play a lot of spirits and play things that uh, that work with spirits. It's pretty good. Uh, it's getting some nice additions this week. Feeling of Dread can uh, keep your opponent from attacking you for two turns and blocking. <laughs> so use this on their combat step, tap down their creatures, and uh, uh, then they don't get to attack you, and then their creatures are still tapped on your turn, you get to attack them. Um, so really, really nice in a racing situation. Uh, Lingering Souls makes two spirits. Pretty darn good. If you can get a black source to flash it back, even better. Rally the Peasants. This might perform a little bit better here in, in Blue White Spirits as your creatures are tough to block to begin with. So you're going to get through with that plus two, plus two, plus O on, uh, on more of those creatures. Whereas in the Humans deck, um, you know, they may trade in combat, which is really nice, but then, you know, you might lose most of your board in that combat. So I think Rally fits better here. And then Silent Departure, this is one that uh, people may overlook. Uh, really, really good, really efficient uh, bounce spell. You're bouncing the creature for single mana, and then later in the game, you just get to do it again. Uh, so, and again, blue-white is just all about keeping your opponent off balance, tapping their stuff, bouncing their stuff, and just clocking them with uh, your flying creatures in the air. So blue-white spirits looks to be uh, just as powerful, if not even a little better, than it was uh, last week. All right, and Werewolves is the last one here. Um, Moonlight Haunt. Moonlight Haunt, this is the main payoff, main reason to be in Werewolves. This essentially is just a Doomblade in, in this deck, so uh, two men to kill anything. 
Um, yeah, if you're in this deck, hopefully you're picking these up a little bit later in the pack and really getting uh, paid off for being in this deck because this is the main reason to be here. Uh, Hinterland Logger, solid two drop. Conduit of Storm, solid three. Uven Wall Captive is decent at two mana. It's a, a little clunky, but uh, it you know it ramps you. It turns into a big thing late in the game. Um, this this deck, you know, if you've got some premium uh, red uh, removal, and then you get to also use Moonlight Hunt, and maybe you have an uncommon or two or or a rare, heaven forbid. Uh, yeah, this deck can do a lot of work. So those are the four archetypes that are sort of where I would recommend starting your drafts if you're new to the format. Uh, in terms of what this gets, not not a ton. It does get travel preparations, which I think the front side of travel preparations, just getting to use it the first time, I should say, is um, totally worth it and, and, and good enough. Um, but again, if you can squeeze a white source into your deck and maybe get to flash it back, all the better. Uh, and then finally, I want to talk about the Delirium package in green. Uh, Raf Levy put out a video on YouTube explaining this in a whole lot more detail, and uh, it's very, very excellent video, so I'd check that out if I were you. Uh, but we'll just go over quickly here. you got Narwood Dryad and Obsessive Skinner as really good Delirium payoffs at common that affect the board early. You've got Grapple with the Past that enables Delirium at common. And you've got Rabid Bite, which in conjunction with the Death Touch on the Dryad can kill anything on your opponent's board, and it's a sorcery, which is kind of hard to come by uh, in green sometimes, so that's going to help enable uh, Delirium as well for you as that goes straight to the graveyard. So between these four cards, you can pair this with sort of any other color, like this can go in a green-white humans deck, you can have this Delirium package, you could obviously pair it with black, where it's sort of most supported, it can go with blue, uh, and it can go with red. So this is a great sort of thing to look out for, and, and uh, I know that uh, you know, Ref was recommending forcing this. Um, if that's still possible, this uh, late into the format, I would recommend doing it because it looks very, very powerful and it sort of fits anywhere. So uh, be on the lookout for this group of commons. And furthermore, it's getting some nice ads this week. Um, Forbidden Alchemy, if you're in green, blue is gonna be really good to enable your delirium. Flashing it back later in the game is definitely doable. Uh, it's not super powerful, but a, sort of a, a mid-tier playable for the deck. Knot of the Bone is uh, a great way to stay alive uh, in a deck that's really heavily milling itself. Um, the flashback's quite nice on this. And then, of course, the big one that everyone's talking about this week is Spider Spawning. Five mana to create a one-two spider for each creature in your graveyard, and you can flash it back for seven mana. Um, so, you know, people are probably going to be trying to force this deck. It might be harder to come by this week, but if for some reason it is open, it could be one of the more powerful strategies, especially for this week when you have access to Knot of the Bone and Spider Spawning to just, you know, really, really tough for your opponent to kill you when you have these cards going on and, and a solid self-mill strategy. So be on the lookout for these. Uh, other new cards that are coming this week, Mystic Retrieval, sort of a solid to not great <laughs> playable in uh your red blue it's pretty expensive but you will get a bunch of spells triggers off of it so if you're in the slower red blue deck that's trying to make the game go long and win with uh, rise from the tides then i think this is solid include and then unburial rights uh could fit well in the uh green self mill decks if you have some fatties to bring back uh, just a lot of value here if you're sort of a mid-rangey deck uh and you can flash it back you know if, you, if you're continuing to reanimate like a a four drop or a five drop or something, <clears throat> excuse me, it can be, uh, yeah, really tough for your opponent to deal with. So certainly a, a powerful card and one to watch out for. Uh, that's it for this week. Thank you so much. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Click like, click subscribe, and you can reach out to me, how to draft mtg at gmail.com. If, uh, yeah, if you'd like to say hi or uh, inquire about uh, any online coaching or anything like that. And uh, we will talk to you very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.